Hey guys, Cam from Outer C7 Owners, and today is a quick video just showing you how to diagnose any kind of misfire you may have on your Audi 30T supercharged engine. There's typically three main culprits for your normal misfires, and they range from pretty easy to fix to a little bit more difficult to fix. We're going to cover all of them. Okay, so let's talk about the three main issues that can result in having a misfire on your supercharged 3.0T engine. Just so you guys know why I'm doing this, I was on the way home from the gym today and I got on the highway, started accelerating, got into the gas, got a misfire, got the EPC light. I used my OBD11 to check what was going on and just showed a misfire on cylinder three. Cylinder three is on the passenger side closest to the firewall. So if you don't know, it's one, two, three for your cylinders on the passenger side or the passenger bank. On the other side, starting from the front going back, it's four, five, six. That's how you can figure out which cylinder is having a misfire. But the first and the easiest fix, so to speak, when it comes to a misfire is having a bad coil pack. I've already got mine kind of pulled out here. And this is a coil pack if you've never seen one but these are super easy to replace. You just unplug them from the wiring harness and you pop them out, replace it with a new one. The second issue would be a bad spark plug. And I'm going to do something here to test my spark plugs in a little bit. Once again, pretty easy. Once you get your coil pack out, you just use a spark plug gasket. You go down there and pull it out, replace it. Make sure they're properly gapped. If you want to see a full DIY on replacing your coil packs and your spark plugs, I've got a video on that as well. It should be hopefully linked up somewhere here on a card on the YouTube channel. After that, your third most common occurrence for a misfire, especially on cylinders three and cylinder six, is because of a leaking intercooler core inside your supercharger. What happens is through multiple heat cycles of getting really hot and really cold, those start to deteriorate and the leak coolant down through the intercooler core into your intake manifold. And then that gets put into each of your cylinders in the combustion chamber. And as liquid gets in there, it stops the engine from being able to properly combust the fuel and the air and you'll get a misfire. That requires removing the supercharger, disassembling the supercharger to replace those cores. So that's your biggest, most intensive replacement. I think that's what's going on with mine because I have a used intercooler core on the passenger side, but I'm gonna do some diagnosing first to figure out exactly what's going on before I tear that apart. So that's what I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Real fast before anybody says something in the comments, yes, there are other things that can produce misfires on this engine, but they're just not as common as these three. These are your most common three. The other things that could potentially produce misfires in this engine is having really bad valve cover gaskets that are just leaking down in through the spark plug wells, if you wanna call them that, and introducing oil through the grooves getting into the combustion chamber. That really doesn't happen too often because most people replace the valve cover gaskets before it gets that bad because you see the valve cover gaskets leaking on the outside. The other thing is potentially if you have OM catalytic converters and they're getting clogged, as you accelerate, it will act as if you're getting a misfire and what's happening is you're just getting too much back pressure on the engine and it'll cause the car to go into epc mode as well and usually though if you scan for codes it'll show you that you're going to have a catalyst issue so those are two other issues that not as common but could potentially be resulting in what appears to be a misfire now let's talk about how we're going to diagnose what is causing the misfire the first and the easiest way to diagnose what is going on with your misfire is to just swap two of the coil packs so literally, you would just take one of them out, take the second one out, doesn't matter which one, swap them around, put them back in, run the car, and then use your OBD-11 or something else to scan it and see if the misfire moved to another cylinder. And obviously this is, happen this is only good if you have one cylinder misfiring. If you're having multiple cylinders misfire, then you might have to swap some out over here. So like, let's say none of them are misfiring over here and you got cylinders two and three both doing it. Then you would probably want to take those two off, swap them with over here, uh, the coil packs over here and put them over here. So a little bit more intensive, but still fairly simple. So if you swap those two around, you go and you drive and the cylinder that is misfiring goes from cylinder three to cylinder two or whatever it is, it moves. Then you know you have a coil pack issue and you need to replace your coil pack. Super simple fix, relatively cheap, good to go. But what happens if you do that and it's still sitting in cylinder three or the original cylinder that you have misfires in? Then you have to take everything apart again and you have to move your spark plug. You know, you can inspect it and see what it looks like, but if it looks okay, cylinder sharp is defective, you'll have to swap it with another cylinder. So you would remove those out, swap those two, do that. I'm gonna do this all at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to swap these 
And then I'm also gonna take the spark plug out of cylinder three that's misfiring, and I'm gonna move it to uh, cylinder one. And the reason I'm not gonna move it to cylinder two is because I've already swapped the coil packs. So if I swap this uh, spark plug in the same cylinder that I swapped a coil pack and it moves to cylinder two, I don't know if it's the coil pack or the spark plug. So I'm gonna move cylinder three spark plug to cylinder one, swap them there. I'm gonna move, as I've already done, cylinder three's coil pack to cylinder two. And then I know if it moves to cylinder two, I've got a coil pack issue. If it moves to cylinder one, then I got a spark plug issue. If it doesn't move at all and it's still in cylinder three, I've likely got a leaking intercooler core issue. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. Pro tip, while you're doing this, it's always a really good idea to verify your spark plug gap for the tune that you have on your car. There's different gaps recommended from different companies for different stages of your tunes. So go ahead and verify which one you should have on your spark plugs. Make sure you're running the correct spark plugs. And then you want to get something that is accurate at verifying the spark plug gap. I highly suggest getting the thin metal strips that verify the spark plug gap as well as one of those things off of eBay that allows you to really precise precisely compress your spark plug to get like the perfect fitment. Uh, they cost like 10 or 15 bucks on eBay. Don't use the little chip coin thing. That's just not very accurate. I just got all my spark plugs removed and just doing some inspection here. I think I know what the issue is. We're still gonna diagnose it how I said, but if we go over here and we look at the tips, you can see that that one has a little bit of ash fouling on it compared to the others, and, and this looks a lot darker than it you know, really is because I don't have great lighting here. But the other two look normal. They look exactly how they should. This one has some ash fouling, and that's indicative of some coolant or water because I'm running distilled water getting into the combustion chamber, and that's what it's gonna look like. So more than likely, I have a leaking intercooler core. We just got the car all buttoned back together. Like I said, for my particular case, cylinder three is misfiring. So we swapped the cylinder three coil pack to cylinder two. Uh, we swapped the cylinder three spark plug to cylinder one. I inspected them all. The cylinder three spark plug that I moved did have ash fouling. So it looks like I probably have a leaking intercooler core, but we're gonna go ahead and take the car for a spin, get it to misfire again. We'll scan it with OBD 11 and see if the misfire moved. If it did, great, that's an easy fix. If not, I'm gonna have to swap my intercooler core. All right, guys, I hope you found this video informative and helpful. It's pretty easy to diagnose your typical misfire on these cars. Like I said, usually it's the spark plug, the coil pack, or the uh, intercooler core. Beyond that, if doing this doesn't fix it, then you might have a bigger issue going on with oil seeping down into the combustion chamber or potentially a catalytic converter failing if you still have your OEM catalytic converters. Unfortunately for me, I just got back from my test drive and the spark plug, I'm sorry, the misfire stayed in cylinder three. So that means I have a leaking intercooler core. And I kind of verified that another way, which is particular to my car because I have a divorce reservoir. Remember my setup, I've got my intercooler, or I should say my supercharger coolant loop separated. So this is my reservoir for my intercooler cores. And I checked the volume of water in there and it is lower than what it should be. That means water is escaping from the system somewhere and without there being any visible leaks anywhere, that means it's coming out in the intercooler core into the combustion chamber. So fortunately, I got to swap intercooler cores. Just another day in the life without AC7 owners. Once again, thank you for tuning in to another video. Like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.